Hello everyone. In this video, you are going to learn about overview of amino acids metabolism. Amino acids are the structural component of proteins. Means proteins are linear polymers of L alpha amino acids and that's why protein metabolism can be appropriately learned as amino acids metabolism. In addition to this, you will also learn various mechanisms of ammonia toxicity. Let's first understand what is nitrogen balance. Unlike carbohydrates and lipids, proteins do not have specific storage form. And a healthy adult eating a well-balanced diet is said to be in a nitrogen balance. This nitrogen balance is a state in which nitrogen ingested in the form of dietary protein each day it is balanced by the amount excreted resulting in no net change in the total body nitrogen content. So intake is equal to output. There is another condition it is called as positive nitrogen balance when intake of protein is more than output of protein and it is seen in the growing children, pregnant women and during the recovery after serious illness. Negative nitrogen balance when intake is less than the output and it is seen during the conditions like Kosherkar or marasmus. What is amino acid pool? This amino acid pool consists of the body's total free amino acids and it is about 100 grams. Two amino acids glutamate and glutamine they constitute half of the total amino acid pool and this amino acid pool is maintained by the sources that contribute amino acids and the processes that utilize them. Body protein is in the dynamic state. There is about 10 to 12 kgs of body protein and this amino acid pool gets the amino acid through protein breakdown that is about 350 to 400 gram per day. We also get amino acids from dietary protein that is 40 to 100 grams per day and synthesis of non-essential amino acid is also one of the contributor of amino acid pool. Protein cannot be stored in the body so there is protein loss from the body that is 30 to 50 grams per day in the form of urea through urine and that's why the protein has to be supplemented in the diet and about 30 to 50 grams of protein which is lost every day that same amount has to be supplied daily to maintain the nitrogen balance. So every adult has about 1 gram per kg per day of recommended dietary allowance for protein. Now how this amino acid pool is utilized? What are the various processes? Protein synthesis occurs from amino acid pool that is about 300 to 400 grams per day protein synthesis occurs. Synthesis of non-protein nitrogenous compounds that is about 30 grams per day. It, it is required for synthesis of porphyrin, creatine, various hormones, neurotransmitters, purine, pyrimidines, niacin and thyroxine. Amino acid pool is required for energy that is 10 to 15 percent of energy can be derived from amino acids and if the amino acids are supplemented or supplied in the diet over the required amount then the amino acids can be converted to carbohydrates and fats. The structure of amino acid constitutes amino group and carbon skeleton. So amino acid metabolism constitutes two important steps. The first one is removal of this amino group from the amino acids that is metabolism of amino group. The, this ammonia is released from this um, uh, amino acids and it is converted into less toxic form that is urea. It occurs in the liver and later it is excreted through kidney via urine. And now what happens to this carbon skeleton? The metabolism of carbon skeleton results in the formation of either pyruvate intermediates of TCA cycle, acetyl-CoA or acetoacetyl-CoA. The first process in the metabolism of amino group is transamination. In the transamination, there is just transfer of alpha amino group from one amino acid to the keto acid to form other amino acid and keto acid. For example, this is one amino acid and it has amino group and that there is transfer of this amino acid to the 
keto acid alpha ketoglutarate is a keto acid and amino group from this amino acid is now transferred to alpha ketoglutarate to form another amino acid that is glutamate and there is formation of keto acid 2 that is the second keto acid so in the process of transfer transamination there is just transfer of amino group from one amino acid to the keto acid to form other amino acid and keto acid and this process is reversible and it requires amino transferases and coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate in this process of transamination the amino acid glutamate it acts as a collecting center of amino group from various amino acids the second process is deamination the removal of amino group from amino acid as a free ammonium ion is known as deamination please note that transamination involves only the transfer of amino group from amino acid while deamination removes the amino group as ammonia leading in the formation of urea and glutamate act as a central molecule for transamination as well as deamination this deamination occurs both as oxidative and non oxidative deamination so in the oxidative deamination there is deamination is coupled with oxidation in which the nitrogen atom in the glutamate is converted into free ammonium ion and this reaction mostly occurs in the liver and it leads to formation of alpha ketoglutarate and free ammonium ion so ammonia generation occurs with the help of this second reaction that is deamination ammonia is constantly generated during the metabolism of amino acids and other nitrogen containing compounds and this ammonia is toxic hence it is rapidly transported in the blood to reach the liver where it is converted to urea which is less toxic but this ammonia is never transported in the free form but it is transported in the blood in the form of its amino or amide group and the major forms of ammonia transport between various tissues and the liver are glutamine and alanine and half of the circulating ammonia is in the form of amide group that is glutamine so the next step is formation of glutamine and this glutamate and ammonia they combine to form the glutamine and the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is glutamine synthase so ammonia transportation in the blood occurs by glutamine and this glutamine acts as a storehouse of ammonia and later it is then catalyzed by glutaminase to form glutamate and ammonia is released and this ammonia is later incorporated in the urea through urea cycle in the liver urea is formed which is less toxic form and then it is excreted to through urine and that's how metabolism of amino group constitutes of transamination where only transfer of amino group occurs and all amino groups are collected at a collection center that is glutamate glutamate is the only amino acid which undergoes oxidative deamination in the liver to form alpha ketoglutarate and it releases free ammonia now this free ammonia is toxic and it has to be transported in the blood so there is formation of glutamine from ammonia and glutamate later on from this glutamine ammonia is generated which is converted into urea which is less toxic form and finally excreted through urine in the form of urea now let's see what happens to the carbon skeleton there are four important fates the first is oxidation by tca cycle to produce energy second is synthesis of non essential amino acid third is synthesis of glucose and fourth is formation of lipids the carbon skeleton of 20 standard amino acids are converted into one of the seven molecules namely pyruvate acetyl coa acetoacetyl coa alpha ketoglutarate succinyl coa fumarate and oxaloacetate now depending on the point at which the carbons from an amino acid enter the tca cycle and other central metabolic pathway the amino acids are categorized as glucogenic or ketogenic now what are glucogenic amino acid these are the amino acid whose carbon skeleton is degraded to pyruvate or one of the intermediate of tca cycle like alpha ketoglutarate succinyl coa fumarate or oxaloacetate these intermediates are capable of forming glucose through gluconeogenesis now what are ketogenic amino acid 
these amino acids whose carbon skeleton is converted either into acetyl coa or aceto acetyl coa they are designated as, as ketogenic amino acids and fatty acids ketone bodies and cholesterol can be synthesized from acetyl coa and aceto acetyl coa is itself a ketone body which are both glucogenic and ketogenic amino acid these amino acids whose carbon skeleton yields pyruvate or tca cycle intermediates in addition to acetyl coa or aceto acetyl coa so we know that there are four important amino acids which are both glucogenic and ketogenic and these can be remembered as pit that is phenylalanine isoleucine tyrosine and tryptophan there are two amino acids which are ketogenic and they are leucine and lysine out of which leucine is exclusively ketogenic and all other remo remaining amino acids are glucogenic now let's understand the various mechanisms of ammonia toxicity ammonia is toxic to brain it may lead to coma and irreversible brain damage the first mechanism is decreased glucose utilization and atp generation accumulation of ammonia results in the synthesis of more glutamate and more glutamine in this process alpha ketoglutarate is utilized so this reduce the supply of alpha ketoglutarate to the brain cells and this alpha ketoglutarate is intermediate of tca cycle so its depleted level results in the impairment of tca cycle which adversely affects the production of atp and hence the toxic effects of ammonia on the brain cells are due to reduced availability of atp to brain cells this is the first mechanism second mechanism is osmotic effects due to glutamine accumulation so there is more formation of glutamine in brain cells so it leads to osmotic shift of water into the cells and which further results in swelling and functional damage to the cells which aggravates encephalopathy and hyperammonemia the third mechanism has neurotransmitter role and increase ammonia concentration enhances the formation of glutamine from glutamate this depletes the level of brain pool of glutamate and this in turn decreases the formation of gamma amino butyric acid that is uh, gaba and it is inhibitory neurotransmitter so decreased level of inhibitory neurotransmitter has harmful effects on the brain in addition to this increased glutamine level in the brain causes its removal from the brain cells and the glutamine is transported out by the same transporter which allows tryptophan to enter into the brain cell that is a antiport and as a result there is en enhanced tryptophan levels in the brain cell which results in the increased synthesis of serotonin because serotonin is synthesized from tryptophan and this serotonin is a neurotransmitter so both decreased gaba and increased serotonin these are responsible for the toxic effects due to ammonia now the fourth mechanism is neuronal dysfunction hyperammonemia that is decreased ammonia concentration increases permeability of the neuronal membrane to potassium and chloride ions and it results in the ionic imbalance and this is responsible for bizarre behavior in patients having ammonia toxicity if you find this video useful please subscribe like and share and thank you for watching